While Boeing is focusing on its latest wide-body aircraft, 777X, Airbus is not going to stay quiet when revealing information about the A350-2000. However, it does not stop there. To win the narrow-body aircraft market, the European manufacturer also promises a new version of the stretched A220 that promises to shake up the aviation industry. So why is its launch said to change the entire industry? How will it beat its rival from Boeing? Let's find out. Speaking to Aviation Week at this year's Paris Air Show, Airbus Canada CEO Benoit Schultz estimated that a stretched A220, dubbed the A220-500, could enter service after 2030. The aircraft maker will complete advanced studies on the A220 variant by the end of this year. Schultz added, the larger jet will not change much, if anything, to the plane's basic design, the executive said. The exception to this is likely to be a more powerful engine. Currently, the A220 is powered by the Pratt and Whitney PW-1500G, part of the PW-1000G family of aircraft engines, also known as geared turbofan. While the PW-1500G is not affected by the powder metal issues that plague the PW-1100G, operators have complained about the engine's durability and long maintenance intervals in the past. In 2023, Larry Culp, CEO of GE Aerospace, which operates the CFM International Joint Venture with Safran Aircraft Engines, told the Air Current that the company would consider competing with Pratt & Whitney for customers looking to power its A220-2500 aircraft. The two engine makers are currently competing for airline money on the A320neo family with their Leap 1A and PW-1100G engines. In fact, a stretched A220 is not a new concept, and rumors of a stretch have been circulating for years. Even when Bombardier, which along with the government of Quebec was responsible for the aircraft program, then known as the C-Series, there were discussions about a possible stretch. According to Liam News and Analysis, Boeing petitioned the U.S. International Trade Administration to investigate whether Bombardier had heavily discounted the C-Series to win Delta's order in 2017. The U.S.-based aircraft maker was also concerned that the Canadian company would not only compete with the 737 MAX 7 with the CS300, now known as the A220-300, but could also launch a direct competitor to the 737-800 and 737 MAX 8, known as the CS500. This translates directly to the A220-500 in today's terms. In a way, Boeing was right. For example, Air Baltic, one of the world's largest A220 operators, with 50 A220-300 and more to come in the next few years, had to consider the A319 CEO, 737 MAX 7 and CS300 when looking for its next aircraft. Martin Gauss, former chairman and CEO of Air Baltic, told Aerotime in 2023 that no aircraft could compete with the CS300 because all three had essentially the same engine technology. However, the Bombardier aircraft was lighter, making the aircraft more economical to operate. The trade dispute eventually led to Airbus's acquisition of the C-Series program from the Canadian company, which is now jointly controlled by the European aircraft manufacturer and the Quebec government under the Airbus Canada Limited Partnership. However, the timeline Schultz outlined is still quite far away and is subject to change. For Airbus, the priority now is to accelerate the A220-14 to aircraft per month. In the Airbus Business Bulletin on June 18th, Florent Massou D. Labacare, Executive Vice President of Operations for Airbus Commercial Aircraft, noted that the acquisition of Spirit Aerosystems facilities that manufacture parts for Airbus aircraft is crucial to accelerating the monthly price of the A220. The parts in question include the A220's brackets, systems, strut wing hardware, tail fins, wings, control surfaces, and mid-fuselage sections. Labacare explained that there have been issues at sites that produce parts for the A220, including in Belfast, Northern Ireland, where Spirit builds the wings for the aircraft. It's not the location itself, it's the upstream supply chain that we need to prepare and make sure they fully understand what needs to be done," he said. At the same event, Christian Scherer, CEO of Airbus Commercial Aircraft, said that with the current backlog, the price of 14 jets per month was sustainable. I admit that it's not our strongest backlog, but it's a strength in a market where we can't serve customers before the 2030s on the A320neo and A321neo," Scherer admitted, 
adding that Airbus was well positioned to deliver the A220, which will be delivered in 2027 or 2028. The CEO said there was a lot of action going on behind the scenes, which could reveal more orders for the A220 family. Scherer concluded by saying bluntly that he was not concerned about the ability to maintain speed 14 on the A220, in fact I think before too long you will see it develop, but that is not a decision yet. By the way, if you have watched this far, please leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe to support us. Let's continue. If green lit for production, the A2-2500 promises to be more than just a scaled up version of the A220, but a strategic step forward to compete directly with the giants that dominate the segment, namely Boeing's 737 MAX 8 and its Airbus sibling, the A320neo. In terms of passenger capacity, the A2-2500 is expected to seat around 180 passengers, just a little more than the 737 MAX 8's 178. However, in an industry where each seat can generate millions of dollars in revenue each year, this small difference can still mean a lot. In terms of range, both aircraft are designed to fly around 4,000 nautical miles, allowing them to fly non-stop between many important city pairs on continents without refueling. This is the key point that helps airlines optimize schedules and save operating costs. If you look at the DNA of the A220 series, it is clear that Airbus has oriented this aircraft to be a modern, environmentally friendly, and especially extremely fuel-efficient aircraft. Thanks to its advanced design and new generation engines, the current A220 has proven its outstanding performance, and if the stretch version maintains, or even improves, these parameters, it will be a strong blow to long-standing competitors. Not only stopping at the technical aspect, the passenger experience is also a powerful weapon of the A220. With a fuselage diameter larger than many competitors in the same segment, the jet cabin brings a spacious, airy feeling, something that passengers can easily feel whether on short or long flights. Large windows, spacious luggage compartment, and comfortable seats are obvious plus points. However, the Boeing MAX 8 is not easy to beat. As one of the best-selling aircraft in modern history, the MAX 8 has proven its appeal with thousands of orders from all over the world. This popularity brings an invisible but very important advantage, a widely established maintenance, spare parts, and training network, giving airlines more peace of mind when operating. In addition, Boeing has an extremely flexible strategy. The 737 MAX series has many versions from small to large, suitable for the diverse needs of airlines, from crowded routes to less crowded routes. This is something that Airbus needs to consider carefully if it wants to push the A220 to the next level. While the A22500's potential is undeniable, Airbus has yet to set a specific timetable for its production. Part of the reason may be strategic, if the new jet becomes too successful, it could cannibalize the A320neo, Airbus's current flagship and most profitable offering. In addition, expanding the A220's production capacity would require significant investment in infrastructure, manpower, and supply chain, factors that cannot be decided overnight. The confrontation between the A2-2500 and the 737 MAX 8, if the A220 stretch does indeed launch, will be one of the most exciting races in the aviation world in the next decade. On one side is innovation, efficiency and customer experience. On the other is popularity, stability and a strong support network. Who will prevail? The answer depends on Airbus's decision. Boeing's long-term strategy, and above all, the ever-changing needs of the global aviation market. And you, what do you think about the future capabilities of Airbus aircraft? Would you prefer A2-2500 or 737 MAX? Please comment below the video. Goodbye, and see you in the next video.